Alright, so this is Deep Carbon Observatory, which was the first module I've ever seen that had its own trailer video. And the back of it, so it's just plain black. You can get this some print on demand from Drive Through RPG. But I just got the PDF and printed it out here. And I got the little notes and stuff here. And you know, it's mostly white and easy to see what things are. Easy to print out because it's mostly white. But one of the weaknesses it has get to is the maps. The maps are just awful. And so there were complaints about that for years. And so Patrick Stewart and Scrap Princess, who did this, made this a deluxe version of it. With and it begins with the socially consulous trial abide explaining that they don't give you every detail on here, they just give you the details that you need. So don't worry about it. And so here's it comes with a map. Here on the inside page, you know, the inside covers this little explanation, and then there's a map and the title page. So it's a bit different, but so here's a page that explains their notation that they use. They every section of pages has a number. And those are in bold black, so if they're referring to it elsewhere, it'll be in bold black. There are certain elements which are in red. And the page numbers are in blue. So if it refers to a specific page, that will be in blue print. If it refers to a particular element, it'll be in red. And it gives you the information on a average character. You know, an average person, so you have that. Uh, this is pretty system neutral. Uh, armor class is not a number, it's unarmored, S chain, S plate, S plate plus three, something like that. Now, something new is 30 plot hooks to get you in here. The original version did not have this, and some of these are pretty interesting. I don't want to spoil them. Um, and then it goes to on some stuff about how to put this in your world and mentions some survival and starvation rules and sleep deprivation rules, which are very important for this module. And we're not, in the, again, not in the original. So here's the original introduction. This is all the introduction you had was this story once upon a time, there was an empire of unspeakable wealth that traded in secrets, dark wonders, and death. And many of the strange things now on earth were theirs. They drew their power and magic from a gate within the earth. But as their kingdom slowly died, they locked away their treasure within a lake and set their sleepless and indestructible guards. Everyone knows where it is, on the lock upriver from Caramor. No one who goes there has ever come back. So, this is in the original version, too. Same thing. Okay. And so, here's some things to help you describe what's going on in Caramore. Because when you get to Caramore, it's flooded. And there's a rival adventure party here that... They have pictures of, which you didn't have in the original version. And then here's the flood. It's sort of a flow chart. And this was in the original too. Um, one, one thing that's different about this, in the original version, there were certain things that were in bold. They're now in italics. Uh, the name of the person you're dealing with is now at the top in bold. It was not in the original version. Also missing 
is the original version told you what was going to happen to these people if the players did not act. What would become of them? And, you know, so it's a, like a flowchart with multiple things going on at the same time. The way I handled this is if a player, when we, we started, the players could see all three things at the top. And depending on which one they went to interact with, if they were on the side, they would only be able to see two different things going on at the same time before they moved on to the next one. But if in the middle, they'd be able to see three different things going on at the same time. And this, when I ran this, the party split. That's how they handled this. And also, if you look here, it comes with not one, not two, but three ribbons. Here's the red ribbon. Okay, so like in the original, it has some deeper explanation about what's in these boxes. Who are these? More explanation about what's going on. And that's pretty close to the same. You see, here's the big bold numbers. There's the red number and the blue page number at the bottom, just like I said. Got some more. This picture, this is a new picture here. So after those elements, we come to the crews, which is a rival adventure party. And in the original versions, you've got stock step blocks for their attributes. And you don't get that here. You just get the information that is relevant. Yeah, so they might have a dexterity of 15, and that's included in the information you get as far as their armor class, but not that the dexterity is actually 15. So, so we've got new pictures on them. Let's look at the old pictures here. There she is. And there she is. Okay, and there's, this is the picture we had before. This is the picture we have now. This is the picture of her we had before. Or so, sorry, now. And this is what we had before. So much better art here. And there's like a bunch more information about how to run these guys and their tactics. You know, the old one had some stuff on their tactics, but now you get more. More on them and their, their stats. And pictures of their, their weapons. Okay, so after that is in this book comes the golems. Uh, one of the monsters in the wandering monster thing in the old book was these golems. They were slightly different from each other, but here you get a whole page devoted to each golem. The, the turbine, and here they, you're just given names, but in the original version, they were called turbine golems, and they did have names, but the generic term was turbine golems. They were kind of magical robots. Okay, so now we get to the map. And so yeah, here is the old map. Yeah, it's not a very good map, but because of the lack of detail in this map, I was able to, these lines I've drawn here are where I said this is how far they could get in a day. It was arbitrarily decided by me this is how far they could get and that allowed me to paste things. But here it's not curvy like a river should be. It's squares which I don't like the look of but the players are not going to see this anyway. And each square is I think three miles across but it doesn't say on this map here which is unfortunate but this is the big map and there's another copy of it inside the cover there so and things are on the map in a slightly different order so here's an overview of the whole map and here's a new thing is Rival adventure parties, there's a bunch of them racing to get upriver 
And so if you get bogged down and don't keep moving, some of these may catch up with you, and some of them are already ahead of you. And then here's a detail of a particular part of the map. And this one tells you one square is three miles across. And this shows what the different water levels are on this flooded river here. And so here's an overview of the river and trying to travel up it. And then we get to the first section of the river here, which is in that detail map. And random encounters, the different things that you could random encounter. There's a new one here, Copex, which was not, and the Carl Copex. Neither of these were on the original one. And they've changed the names of some of the some of the creatures. Uh, the cow-sized killer platypus is now the alpha platypus. I like cow-sized killer platypus better. The house-sized horseshoe crab is now the horseshoe super crab. I, I like house-sized horseshoe crab better. And there's a scavenging lung fish, the three meter pike. Here's a picture of a turbine golem. It's, there are only two pictures with turbine golems of the whole thing. We don't get full pages like we do in the new version. So here's a different section of the you know, section of the map, what you run into. The order of encounters is changed slightly. And then here's another section and what you encounter. And again, the order of encounters has changed slightly. And here's the old picture of the windmill. And here's the new picture, much better. There's the velvet worm. Okay, another section. And what is on there? There's a new thing called the giant cypress, which was not there before. I think it was tall oak before. And got so. And here's another section. And then we get to the dam. Now, the picture, some of the pictures are the same, but they're in color in the new version and they weren't in the old version. But this is the old map of the dam, which to me is easier to understand than the new one. Even though the new one looks better, the old one was better at, the old one's better at explaining what it is that you're trying to see here. Here's outside climbing, what's on the other side, what happens if you fall in the water of the dam. So the dam is broken, the water's rushing through, so if you fall in it, you're in trouble. Here's one side of the dam and the different rooms there. And there's more pictures than there were before. Here's another section. See, this picture, there's a little bit of color. It's much easier to see than the old one. Uh, another picture of the different things. Here's another thing that was not there before. And so when you get to beyond there, you can find the map, you come to the next section. Here's the old map. And it's kind of vague about how, how big is this? And now it's laid out in squares so you can see each square is three miles across, but it doesn't. So, you know, how, how far is it? How long does it take you to get through that? And so here's th what you can see from a distance and what you might see if you look closer. Here's the different encounters that you might run into on there. Uh, it's another section of the area 
that's been uncovered by the dam breaking. And some more. Let's see, I've got pictures here. I've got this picture of the Apex. And so we've got this picture here in the old version. And this is the picture in the new version. And this. Yeah, the first time I ran this, I was in a hurry to get to the pit. Here it is, the pit. There's the old version of the pit. And the trailer has a negative version of the pit, which I think looks better than this version. But, yeah, I was in a hurry to get to the pit. And something that wasn't clear to me from the artwork is that the, the different layers, different steps are actually a ramp spiraling down. That was not clear. Players had to climb down each of those steps to get to the bottom. Okay, so then it has a, this was in the very back of the original version, but now we get quite a long description of this guy, which is the worst monster. Okay. Let's go to the map of the... Okay, so there's a dungeon complex that is inside a couple of stalactites. And so you get the side view map, which was not really good enough. So. There was somebody who made some top-down maps, which I used. I'm going to put some side down there. Top-down maps here, which are pretty cool. And I use these for my Roll20 game. And, but in using those, even, it's such a, the way it's laid out, I had to look at this map while I was looking at what was on the screen in order for me as the DM to navigate this thing. But now we've got a new 3D map that's really cool. My only complaint is it doesn't follow this floor plan. It's much more blocky, not curvy like the version I've got here. Okay, so was on conditions of the observatory. As I said, there are different parties, bunch of different adventuring parties racing to get there. And when do they get there? Do they get there before you or after? What's going on here? So here's a subsection of the big map. And it tells you what's on there. So that's nice and handy. And some more on this. Here's another subsection showing you what is where, including a picture of prisoner. Uh, what's what's his number? Yeah, so the, this prisoner who's been here for a long time. And the, here's the old picture of the mushroom pools and the new one with them hanging upside down. Now here's another subsection of the bigger map with what's on there. And another one. And these are pretty good. Uh, the salt drags. So here's the original picture. We compare that to the new one. I don't like the new one as much. Yeah, it describes some of them as being very beautiful, and that, that doesn't look beautiful to me. There's another subsection of the different things that are on there. Uh, 
And here's a new picture. For some reason that I don't understand, if you go to their website and try to buy a t-shirt with this picture, it's hidden. So you have to click that you're an adult to see this picture, which is available on a t-shirt. I don't understand that at all. So there's the Book of Nightmare Philosophy. And the librarians, there was no picture before. And so now there's a really good picture of this lady frozen in a block of ice. And the radio larian, here's the, here's the original picture. And the new one. And one thing, this is printed on glossy paper. That was my complaint about Banes of the Earth, is it wasn't on glossy paper. And, the glossy paper really makes scrap prints as it's art, especially when it's in color, pop out better. So here's the Radiolarian radio telescope with much more detail on it. And when I ran Veins of the Earth, my players never went deep enough to meet the Radiolarian. So this, was, this injured one was the only one they ever met. Another subsection. And this is a picture of the Alt Azimoth Reflector, which there was no picture of that before. And the Azimoth Bearings, yeah, this, this explains it much better than the original version. I'm not sure I was running it correctly. And here's another subsection, some more rules. And this picture, which was in Veins of the Earth, of the map of the world in geological time and it explains it much better than the original version does here. There's a picture of the observatory which you didn't get in the original one and then there's what happens if you the, the telescope was all set up in the original version and here you have to set it up you have to figure out how to set it up how to make it work and then there's what you see, and you just roll a bunch of random things, and you come up with a, for example, who you see is figures of cascaded matter that glow, mistaken in all fact, offer ransomed kings to bribe the guards of Aboleth Halls where the subject looks back. So I tried reading a few of these to the players when I ran this, but it was not make it was hard to describe what they were seeing using those poems there. So what I ended up doing is opening up veins of the earth to a random monster and then describing a scene involving that monster for them to see. And that's what they saw through. So here's another section of the map. And it's got the same pictures it had in the original of the throne, the crown, and the mace. And these had long-term effects on my campaign because we ran No Salvation for Witches. And Aurelia, the Witch Queen, got hold of this stuff. And she turned the crown into her crown, the throne into her throne, and gave the mace to one of her followers who was a cleric. Okay, and so it's a library with some random books that are interesting. Uh, sure, there's, there's a picture. It's in the original, and in color, it doesn't look much better. And there was the slime ambassador, and this, this explains much better what it is and how it works. And so when I first ran this, one of the players was a cleric, a Christian cleric, and he gave a copy of the Bible to the slime ambassador trying to convert him to Christianity. And then later, when we were doing Veins of the Earth, they happened to pass briefly through the city of the green slimes, and they had converted to Christianity, though they didn't explore deep enough to realize that if the slime Christians had ever run into contact with human Christians, the humans would have thought they were the most horrible heretics. 
Anyway, great, great detail about the slime ambassador of the vault. Okay, the vault. Now, Lamentations of the Flame Princess is on a silver standard where one silver piece equals one exp experience point and 50 silver pieces equals one gold piece. But when this was originally written, the it was written for gold piece value. So the treasure was valued in gold pieces on the original version of this. Here it's just denoted in C for coins. So if you're on a, if your game is on a silver standard, that's it's worth a hundred silver pieces, but if it's on a gold standard, it's worth fifty it's worth a hundred gold pieces. So you can make it whatever you want. And so the treasure, the treasure is really valuable, but if you're on a silver standard and this is valued in gold, it's worth a lot, a lot. And I, I did that, I kept it that way on purpose because I wanted to show that treasure in the Underdark is worth a lot more than treasure on the surface. And that's the reason you would want to go adventuring in the Underdark. But because I ran this first in my campaign, the players never got that. They didn't understand that. And one of the... Th the treasure is pretty much the same except for one thing. The Occultum coin. It's worth 2,500 silver pieces, or gold pieces. Um, and 50 times worth that in silver pieces. And, and in order to find out what an occultum is, you have to read Mains of the Earth. Basically, it's a coin used by the gods and arch demons to talk to trade with each other and so each coin is worth a soul or a fate or a doom and I had them be have pictures of things like Odin and demons and things like that on them but in the original version there's a box with 10 times d10 occultum coins they are massless or so weightless yeah massless so they, they don't make encumbrance and the number of them changes randomly every time you try to count them. And the first time they rolled really high, so they get a lot of XP from that. Okay, so there's this little in place about getting out. And in, in case I speak with Dad, here's a timeline of what happened before. And here's a future timeline in case the players do nothing. What happens? And then there's an index, which the original version did not have, but a, a fan made an index, which I included in mine over here. Right, so here's the index that a fan came up with. Here's the index that they came up with. Much, much more detail. And then on the inside cover is a repeat of the map of the dam here and the map of the inside. So didn't mean to do this all in one sitting, but there it is, Deep Carbon Observatory, the new version. 